welcome uh, Mel and welcome to the folks who will be viewing this. We are doing um, a series of conversations called Inside the Lab with the CNBC. Um, in this particular case, we're going to be talking about um, your work and your course. Uh, my name is Lynn Nygaard. I'm the director of the Center for Mind, Brain, and Culture, and I'll be the host today as we talk with Dr. Mel Connor. Um, so, Mel, if you could just briefly introduce yourself and uh, say a few things about um, sort of, I know there's a wide variety of things your work entails, but just a brief description if you can. Sure. Um, so, I'm Mel Connor. I in biological anthropology at Emory, although I'm, my interests are notoriously broad. Yeah. And I, I um, have been at Emory for 37 years. Um, so I've seen quite a lot of changes and, and uh, I'd say almost all of them for the better until we had to shut down a few weeks ago. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah. But, but um, yeah, so I, I, I teach, um, a big introductory course in, in the uh, neuroscience behavioral biology program, which is cross-listed in anthropology. And, and, um, and I, I have long taught, taught um, uh, life cycle courses, human, human biology through the life cycle, and also um, anthropological uh, and evolutionary perspectives on, on childhood and child development. And this this uh, graduate seminar is is one of my uh, my more uh, uh, exciting things that I do. It's a lot of fun uh, for me, and it's a lifelong interest for me. The evolution of of childhood. It's uh, somewhere somewhere in, along the line. Um, this phrase "evo devo" mm -hmm. came along. Um, uh, which which is uh, short for evolution of development, and that that has come to mean uh, a lot of different interesting things. Uh, but I I realized that 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 was a great description of what what I was always interested in, and and I I took to uh, many years ago I took to heart um, uh, Stephen Jay Gould's saying. Uh, that there's no such thing as evolution of adult characteristics. <laughs> it is only evolution of developmental pathways. Ah. And so that's why I, I, uh, I take an evolutionary approach to, uh, uh, to social development, social and emotional development, um, more than pure cognitive uh, development. But, but there, there is social social cognition in the in the course yes. of the picture and and uh, prominently i uh, have them them read my uh my big book on <laughs> right <laughs> You'll get in the cam camera the evolution of childhood yeah you know, speaking about uh, social cognition I, I didn't i didn't pick this picture on the cover but uh so my wife ann kruger is is a developmental psychologist right and she pointed out that those two children are, are doing something that non-human primates don't do. Ah, uh, right, joint attention, joint attention, isn't it? And, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. kind of a perfect uh, um, cover for, for the book, and aside from being a cute picture. And then we, we have a lot of um, journal articles that, uh, um, right. that are on specific topics that, that bring the book uh, uh, up to date and, and uh, ah, right. the last couple of years and also, you know, give students uh, perspectives that are different from mine. Uh, uh, right. So now the, the book was published, um, which you, in 2010, right. um, <laughs> Harvard University Press, yes? Right. <laughs> yes. Um, and so it's the relationship to the course, is this, is this the basis uh, for the course? Do you read? do readings from the book and subsequent articles and um that's, you know what 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 sort of what does the course cover in terms that's, of um, that's exactly uh the plan so right. about half half uh the course is is biological in one way or another and although the the second part um you know i i sometimes 
get criticized for using the word growth in relation to uh, social development, but mm -hmm. I do think there's a growth aspect to it. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can really see it now with my four month old grandson. Uh, yeah. The one month that he's been here has become uh, uh, just um, much more social and, and an alert and a cultural environment. And, and I, right. one reason that I separate socialization from enculturation is that I'm, I'm not too enthusiastic about the claims for culture and non-human species. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I see uh, what I would call protoculture in, in certain right. birds and chimpanzees and, and so on. But culture to me is, is uh, really involves language and symbol and, and uh, intersubjectivity right. and, and, and joint attention and teaching mm -hmm. uh, uh, levels that, that non-human species just sort of toy around with sometimes. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. and, and so I, uh, but socialization is, is something that human, human children have in common with lots of other social primates mm -hmm. and other social species. I, I kind of like to keep those those things separate, and and um, you know it's been said many times that humans are designed, human children are designed to grow up in a cultural environment, and and I agree with that. Uh, so so yeah. uh, the course sort of goes from from the evolutionary uh, uh, origins mm -hmm. to through some some ideas about maturation of. of uh, behavior to social and cultural dimensions of, of development which take up the second half of the course. Right and so it sounds like there are a, a range of questions that the course explores based around these kinds of um, different aspects of childhood and different aspects of um, development. Um, I'm going to uh, sort of ask where do you see the kind of range of theorizing? And you're clearly coming from one point of view, but when you mentioned just a minute ago that um, your course also brings in other points of view. So what's the landscape? Um, I, I know this is a much bigger topic that we can cover within these few minutes, but how do you see the landscape of, of this kind of evolution of childhood? Yeah, so that's a yeah. great question. The, the, the uh, it was famously said by one evolutionist that uh, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution, and I mm -hmm. say nothing in childhood right. makes sense except in in the same light. Um, so you could say that that Darwin's theory is the is the first theory uh, <clears throat> that mm -hmm. motivates the, the right. court. Um, and and Dar even Darwin was already interested in in the evolution of development and, right. and used uh, comparative embryology and, uh, in, in the origin of species. Of, but but also published one of the first very first infant diaries about um, ah, the infancy yeah. son and and um, um, so there are these questions about what what comes from what's the legacy from our evolutionary past and what what uh, isn't uh, and what, what, what's special to to humans, um, right? But when it comes to to um, psychological development, I turn to psychologists uh, and okay. and uh, um, and other um, developmental theorists. Like uh, in a, in a way, my my own my the beginning of my own interest in this was motivated by by John Bowlby's. Uh, Right. Uh, uh, multi-volume work on attachment and his mm -hmm. and Mary Ainsworth's uh, mm -hmm. theory yes. of, of, of attachment. I don't <clears throat> believe everything they said, but 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 right. Toby had had this concept of, of um, mm -hmm. the environment of evolutionary adaptedness, uh, and and that was a concept that. It got me interested in going to study uh, infancy and childhood and hunter gatherers uh, in Africa um, because it was a time in the seven uh, the late sixties actually when when uh, people uh, some people in anthropology were getting very excited about the the origins of human society and in and right. uh, hunter gatherer cultures and and psychologists were that I knew and I were getting more and more and more excited about younger and younger and younger. Right, right. 
that was their idea of origins. And, and so yeah. I went to Africa to sort of study the origins of the origins. And, and, right. and, and right. that's what this course is about and what I've been interested in ever since. Why, I mean, I think you've answered this question, but maybe I'll pose it to you again in a more pointed way, perhaps. But why childhood? Um, like, what is childhood exactly? I mean, in... I mean, I know that there have been histories of childhood as well. So how the conceptualization of childhood has changed over the course of sort of our even more recent memory, you know, in Western cultures, for example, you know, where children were now have a kind of a special place and they don't work, but earlier, you know, or other cultures they do. So what, what counts as childhood? Is, is, is it an age range? Is it a developmental series of developmental stages? Is it um, sort of a set of suite of behaviors? Well, it, it, I, or all of the above. <laughs> It, it's a, you know it's a different suite of behaviors at, at right. every different age. I think that yeah you know, yeah um, when when I uh, look at the first four months of my new grandson's mm -hmm. life, uh, the transformations are, are astounding. Yeah. And, and um, you know I I I get that th there's a lot of research on the <clears throat> the sort of social predilections of newborns. Right. But the, the transformation that takes place between two and four months that many psychologists have, have uh, uh, studied and, and mm -hmm. uh, um, that is, is just uh, almost miraculous. And, and, right. and uh, they call it, the, some call it the two month miracle and some call right. it the revolution. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. And, and um, you know, I, I, I certainly see that. And that's so much that I, that I've learned oh. from psychologists, uh, so, uh, uh, and, and including uh, my wife that was a developer. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, and I think you could say that I, I've tried to be a good student of developmental psychology mm -hmm. and, and tried to contextualize what happens and what, you know, what psychologists and, and, mm -hmm. um, and even pediatricians uh, and know about development uh, in through sort of evolutionary and cross-cultural uh, Comparative literature. I, 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 you know, I should say that the the enculturation part of the course does have examples from lots of different kinds of societies around right. the world in, in the uh, in the literature of, of psychological anthropology, cultural anthropology. Um, what you you know the the you ask what what childhood is. Um, uh, it, it's it, and Jerome Bruner, who also had an influence mm -hmm. on me, uh, uh, yes. wrote a paper once called The Uses of Immaturity. And, uh, and I'm very interested in that idea. He, mm -hmm. he actually he, he, uh, gave more, more than a passing nod toward evolution and, right. and, that and other, some other writings. And the, the uses of immaturity are, are uh, obviously to grow, grow up and become an adapted uh, individual and in your species and in, yeah. human, in a particular culture that, that, right. that could be, uh, require quite different uh, things in some ways from, uh, from the next culture. But it, it's also the, 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 the other big uh, category of uses of immaturity is getting through uh, childhood to adulthood alive right. and, <laughs> yeah. and, and more or less healthy and sane. Mm -hmm. and, and not to go off the rails uh and mm -hmm. and uh you know most of our evolution took place in, in a time when mortality and childhood infancy and childhood was right. very high and 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 so i you know i like to think i like to try to get students to think about how how that those two things get balanced you know the right. whatever's happening at age you know at age four with uh, uh the false belief task right uh, or, or the five to seven shift, or what happens at puberty, mm -hmm. how it both involves uh, getting toward the goal of being a, an adult and, right. and uh, getting through whatever it is you have to get, to, <laughs> yeah. to get to the next. <laughs> right, day. right. Yeah. And I, I think uh, one of the things the book was, was the, the, what I had to say in, about play. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's clearly. Uh, uh, a major feature of not only human childhood, but but uh, the the period of immaturity, the juvenile period, and many many species of mammals and birds. Right. 
And um, there's this, this interesting uh, uh, parallel that's been pointed out between what, ha what happens in development and what happens in evolution. So you have in mm -hmm. development, you have all these seemingly useless behaviors in play that look like a waste of energy, but you could actually think of them as, as uh, uh, generate a huge machine for g generating variation in behavior. Which right, right. The child into a, um, a, a, an exploratory mode and, and, right. and a mode where learning takes place while it's being fun. Right, and, right, right. So you have this rewarding. Right, right, learning, Re yeah. Re rewarding uh, social learning. In every culture, you get a narrowing down of what, what is acceptable behavior right. as, as children grow. And, and uh, in a way, that's sad, but it's also great that they have, you know, this period of immaturity when they can do all these useless right. and, and wasteful looking things. Uh, right. Wasteful at all. That's right. And so then, you know, the parallel with uh, Darwinian evolution is that lots of variation is generated which then uh, is sort of random but is then narrowed down by by natural right. selection to right. produce the particular adaptation so i like yeah. that, that that parallel too well first of all if i can i'm gonna i would like to sit in on the course um but uh, um so yeah it sounds like and of course i from the your work that i know um you're drawing upon just a, a enormous kind of body of evidence from a, a variety of different fields psychology anthropology i assume sociology neuroscience neurobiology right <laughs> is that it is that a fair characterization yeah it's fair and it, it's yeah. you know it's also a treacherous way to go about one's <laughs> intellectual activity and and um um you know pe some people think i'm a, a mile wide and an inch deep uh, uh, but the way i i <laughs> look at it is that I've, I've been interested in certain problems and Right. that I wanted different perspectives of. So right. I couldn't learn as much uh, about neuroscience or about developmental right. psychology as, as a neuroscientist or a developmental psychologist knows. But I, I like to think that, I, that I've gone more than an inch deep. On <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would, uh, I would say things, much like, more than an inch a couple deep. Of yes. other things. So, so I've sacrificed... Uh, uh, some amount of depth, obviously, for breadth, you, you have to make choices yeah. in, in your intellectual life. But, but uh, it, you know, it's been a great adventure. I, I, you could say that I, uh, I made a virtue out of my attention deficit disorder, and uh, <laughs> um, and I have, right. I feel like I have contributed something by virtue of of looking at at certain certain subjects from multiple perspectives instead of one yeah i mean i obviously the center is one of the things that we're trying to do is bring those multiple perspectives onto problems of mind brain and culture and so um so your course and your work exemplifies that goal. It's been, it's been a great privilege for me to uh, to be uh, included the CNBC programs, and mm -hmm. and um, it, it's been one of the better things, more exciting things that's happened at Emory during my 37 years here. And I and I, I consider it a tremendous compliment when my course uh, last time got an NBC number for the first. Yeah, time. <laughs> yeah. And I got, you know, I got. Uh, uh, philosophy graduate student who, who really, you know, had a lot uh, to, to bring that nobody yeah. else in the class could. And, and some of it was a little strange to, to me, and uh, but I, I learned a lot. We got right. A lot. <laughs> right, I, right. I didn't make his life miserable with learning a lot of biology. <laughs> right. Before. And we had, a, we had some great conversations that we wouldn't have had if he hadn't been in, right. in the room. Um, and um, I, I'm looking forward to the same thing, sort of thing happening again because of yeah. the, the CNBC um, network drawing some, some uh, uh, really different kinds of students. You know, every, every single uh, student uh, in that class uh, uh, last time knew a lot of things that I didn't know. Yeah. And that uh, that 
that's what made it so worthwhile. Right. And they they taught they taught me a lot, but they also taught I think each other a lot. Yeah, that's that's always the you know sort of the the beauty of you know I have a, a a graduate student who's leaving to go take a job and she's what I've learned from her you know what we learn from our students is an incredible gift you know so this is a graduate course that'll be taught um, evolution of childhood in the fall semester and they can go to the CNBC website and enroll and. Thank you so very much, Mel. This has really been a pleasure. And it's a great compliment to me to have you asking me questions. I can tell uh, you. Yeah. Oh, a fan of yours. Uh, and of the CNBC. Likewise. Yeah.